At HQ, three years ago, we started with a very fundamental question. How do you make 5G more accessible, consumable and deployable? And more profoundly, is it possible to offer 5G with the operating simplicity, ubiquity and cost economics of Wi-Fi? To answer these questions, we need to assemble a team of superstars. A team of superstars with expertise in 5G, enterprise networking and artificial intelligence. For those unfamiliar with HQ, we are the leading innovators of 5G base station on a single chip. With distinguished pedigrees from Intel, Qualcomm and Broadcom, the company is pioneering a 5G plus AI that is fully customizable and programmed. The team HSQ has delivered more than eight generations of models spanning 3G, 4G and 5G. This amounts to over 50 SOCs found in virtually all Apple and Android products. Equally, we are supported by industry luminaries like the ex-CEO and chairman of Qualcomm, Paul Jacobs, the ex-CTO of Qualcomm, Matt Grob, and Professor Kozarakis of Stanford University. And I'm Hari Gangadharan. I run Silicon Engineering for HQ. My focus and interest is how to reinvent the wireless infrastructure with an elastic, programmable 5G plus AI base station on a chip. To start with, 5G is uh, just not about a fatter, faster pipe. In, it is about connecting the next trillion users in the undefined context of new uh, services, new networks and new architectures all at the edge. So 5G can be summarized in three major pillars, the robustness and reliability of devices, and the high bandwidth or volume of traffic, different deployments require different services from the network as you can see clearly from here. So how do you productize an infrastructure against a massive market with many different performance and feature requirements, with many different power points and many different cost points and with many different workloads and use cases. Traditional RAND architecture has been monolithic, proprietary hardware, and proprietary software and closed proprietary interfaces running between them. Virtualization came in. But virtualization was also proprietary software running on codes of proprietary hardware. And these approaches were rigid and inflexible and allowed no innovation. So Open RAN challenges this decades old framework. Open RAN is built on hardware sourced from any vendor, software sourced by any vendor. The critical enabler in all this is the open interfaces between them. Now let us revisit the base station architecture, but through the lens of an open RAN framework. The flow on the top shows the different functional components of RAN on the receive we start from the right side by receiving RF signals on radios mounted on top of towers. These are processed and converted to digital baseband samples. Some signal processing operations are done at the unit, such as downsampling, filtering, removing the overhead of cyclic prefix and converting it into frequency domain symbols. As the name suggests, this unit is a radio unit and is deployed as per coverage requirements. These frequency domain symbols are then sent over to another entity for further standard specific processing. These include signal processing operations of channel estimation, equalization, demapping and error correction. These corrected bits are converted to packets and this is aided with 3GPP standard defined protocols of MAC and RadioLink, RLC. Scheduling procedures of multiple users under the coverage namely how often to schedule them over there and how much bandwidth to key to them are also part of the MAC functionality. As you can see, this entity manages multiple users and also will be required to perform these operations for multiple radio units connected to it. This is called a distributed unit. 
or a DU. And it is deployed around the coverage regions, aggregating processing for a collection of radio units or carriers. These packets are sent over to central entity, which does IP level processing and managing a connection of the users and mobility across the coverage. This is called a central unit, which in turn aggregates processing from a collection of DUs. The different operations have been segregated in such a manner as to optimize the data traffic and control traffic. In between the entities, the segregations are called as OR and splits. Now that you have seen the main components and their functions, let me summarize based on their hardware activities. First, the RU. The RU converts the RF signals into digital samples and frequency domain symbols. The hardware is specialized hardware for RF and digital signal processing. The distributed unit is a hybrid architecture, specialized hardware for signal processing and uh, you know, general purpose hardware like based on HCXX or ARM for converting bits to packet processing and doing the control and the schedule of. The central unit is a general purpose hardware. It you know, connects to the core network and does a lot of IP packet processing. Connect Most important factor is connecting all of them is the open interface. This allows each vendor to specialize in their field of expertise and create an ecosystem which is rich and open. And now that we have seen the core components of a radio access network, what necessity is one to redesign these topologies. With 5G, there are many applications, a lot more spectrum, both sub and millimeter. Numerous macro cells, many carriers, massive MIMO, and so on. Rather than being hard coded, a fully programmable chip can support different configurations, all based on software upgrades. This includes many sub configurations and millimeter wave as well. Let us now focus on reimagining the DU with a software configurable baseband SOC. The DU implementation starts with the interface to the RUs on the OR and front hole. Imagine now uh, how the hi-fi signal processing done on a software program DSP, channel estimation, equalization, and for massive MIMO systems, beam forming coefficient generations. The forward error correction process is standardized and in intensive operation. There is not much of a requirement for a hardware programmable engine. All this operation culminates in generating bits which need to be transferred to general purpose host process. Hence, a digital interface to the hosts needs to be designed. And with that, we can see uh, how a converged architecture uh, for the SOC is emerging, where we need interfaces to the radios, open RAN of friend hall and to the host processing and we need DSPs and accelerators to perform programmable baseband processing. General compute for management and higher level processing if the deployment so requires. We just covered the advantages of a purely software solution for a macro base station DU. Now imagine the same silicon platform can be reprogrammed for a small cell genome beam or for the enterprise market. In the case of 5G small cell genome beam, a softwareized approach allows for some really innovative and exciting possibilities. For example, the proper balance of integration and softwareization allows the entire RAN stack to be condensed onto a single HQ chip. That is, the entire CU and DU and RU can now all run on one HQ chip. Additionally, softwareizing the hardware now allows a customer to precisely target a solution based on market applications. For instance, a G node B slated for Industry 4.0 can easily be instantiated via firmware upload versus a G node B slated for warehouse logistics versus campus versus large venues and so on and so forth. In the case of HQ, we thought about softwareizing the hardware to support 5G plus AI. The DSP complex 
can readily process all three in parallel or toggle between any of the three without major hardware redesign. By softwareizing the RAM, the hardware no longer needs to be ripped and replaced. Software upgrades and software patches are deployed over the air. The released new standards like release 16 and release 17 for 3GPP are rolled out over the air. Softwareization of the network reduces the capex and opex dramatically. With that, I present the world's first 5G base station on HF. Our approach to addressing complexity is not to trade off area versus features versus cost. Rather, our approach is to softwareize the architecture to support your and splits, hi-fi, low-fi and interfaces and an interconnect to support the traffic between them. As requirements grow, we can scale one block more or less as desired. And to scale even further, we have interchip connection to allow processing expansion. From an SOC perspective, this is a massively parallel, fully programmable baseband with open source tool chains for development. At the heart of the design is a RISC-V based multi-core DSP complex that is fully programmable. The chip integrates 5G plus AI plus NPU plus CPU in an unprecedented low power envelope. Just to highlight the key subsystems of our chip, we have single processing complex, multi-core specialized baseband processing based on a RISC-V ISA, 50 plus custom instructions. The CPU subsystem, 8 core ARM Neoverse CPU. The IO subsystem, controllers for PCI, USB, Ethernet, eSIPRI, ChessD. Protocol accelerators. Data path L2, L3 accelerators for Mac and cryptographic processor. FEC acceleration, forward correction engines and bit processing for, for, for different standards. RF interface, ADCs, DAGs and up-down sampler chains with support for AGC, channel sense, SIG detect and DPD. But what is truly distinguishing about HQ's approach is providing a fully hardened L1 physical layer that is production grade ready and also fully customizable. This is unprecedented in the industry. Customers now have the ability to gain access to 5G algorithms via API to enable targeted customization and value added services. For the first time in Solida history, 5G and ORAN presents an opportunity for profound reinvention and disruption. At HQ, we see 5G as fertile grounds to converge communications, compute and cloud at the edge. Our vision is to create an elastic 5G platform composed of 5G hardware and 5G software that allows fluidity, elasticity and scale for our customers as they migrate through new spectrum, new standards, new points. We want to reconstitute the wireless infrastructure in a manner that is intelligent, agile, and cloud native. And we want to simplify and enhance the connectivity experience by meaningfully converging multiple wireless protocols and AI into one. My talk today reflects a vision which we at HQ have held strongly for three years. With that, I'm really excited to announce the sampling of HQ's 5G base station on a single chip. I'll now open it up for Q&A.